How are you both? We're good, thank you, We're Josh. Good. Where yeah. are you? I'm over in uh, England, but I'm from Wales originally. Oh, because we've come to New York to talk to you in England, <laughs> from England. This feels like uh, a, not exactly a climate-friendly chat, to be honest. <laughs> it is a little bit back to front, but thank, thank yeah. goodness for technology so we can make it work. And yeah, this thank is, God. <laughs> this is such a great film to be talking about and, and such a great family film. And yes. I, I wanted to start off by asking you both, of course, when Max finds himself home alone, the first thing he does is he starts having fun, which is great to see. But if you both find yourselves home alone over the holidays, what do you think the first thing you would do would be? I would probably have the same reasoning as Max. Call the police, parents go to jail. If, you, if people rob the house, defend yourself by all means necessary. Instead, to pass the time, if you have food, if you have electricity, and if you have blankets, and if you have internet, you should be fine. I love that those are the modern things to survive. Please, the internet. As long as you have the internet, you will be able to survive an apocalypse. We're running out of internet. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna need to scavenge the town yeah. for more. Like I'm sure Macaulay Culkin, when he did the earlier films, was probably not like, do you think you could have survived without internet? But this is the modern day. And this yes. is what the kids need. Or some I say, ability to start a fire, but more being able to YouTube <laughs> how to start a fire. And you mentioned both of you, you're over in New York. And of course, the original Home Alone sequel took place in New York. But if this film were to get a sequel, how do you feel about maybe coming back over to this side of the pond and setting a sequel in maybe England or Ireland? Are you working for the um, like the film board or something with it as like a pitch? Tell us about the tax breaks, Josh. That's all we want to know about. <laughs> I think that'd be fun. I mean, what's nice about their characters and their family is they're recently moved to America. Um, and they don't know many people or neighbours, which is a great way of story-wise dealing with, like, who do you call when you don't know your neighbours? Um, but that'd be loads of fun, like Lost in London, basically. Mm. Oh, yeah. That would be Somebody's cool. looking for a cameo. <laughs> and then... <Well. laughs> oh, and then we can do, like, Tower of London. Yeah, yes. we live trapped in the tower. <laughs> yeah. Accidentally. Off with his head, <laughs> hung, drawn and quartered. Very cool. And, and Archie, poor Rob and Ellie, they, they spend this the, pretty much the whole film just looking beaten up thanks to Max. So I got asked, did you feel sorry for them seeing them walking around like that or was it just good fun for you? No, I did not feel sorry for them. In fact, I quite enjoyed their suffering. <laughs> he really did. That's not even him being, it's one of his favourite things is the pain of others, um, which is a beautiful quality, really, isn't it? Yes. That's your natural scheming. I paid you to say that, didn't I? Yes, yes, I've been paid quite a lot of money just to say okay. that. No, I think, I think that is the fun of like the movies with the kid is seeing like silly adults getting bashed over the head yes. and seeing a kid defending himself with all of the toys that you might have in your house. And that ingenuity and creativity, I think, is like... I'm throwing all my kid. toys out of my pram strategically <laughs> to inflict as much damage to the threats as Metaphorically and literally. And of course, Ashlyn, you don't get to be involved in all the craziness in the house, but you get some great scenes, both that awkwardness on the plane and there's that little fantasy sequence with you behind bars. So I can imagine those were fun moments for you on set as well. I love doing the plane sequence. We have this amazing actor... Uh, he's a Canadian improviser and we spent ages doing that scene because we just improvised for age for just like take after take and that for me was the um, if we're looking for little moments of homages to the first movies those moments with the mother and jo uh, John Candy and Catherine O'Hara were some of my favorites to watch so those moments of two characters or two clowns who are so conflicted in, in what they're looking for and annoying each other are really good fun to play. Yeah, and the, the relationship between your two characters is such a big part of this film, even though you're separated for a long time, and it does feel as the film goes on, you do get closer than when we first meet them both. But I was wondering, for you two as actors, what was that like on set, that dynamic you had to create between yourselves and, and the bond you had up in Montreal? 
think we get along really well. Yeah, we're just naturally bonded. Yeah, um, he's a kind of a, like a, an adult uh, personality, and I'm a very childish personality. So I think we both feel like we're like two 14 year olds hanging out. Yeah, sort of balances up, you know. And of course, I big... just typically get on with everyone. Yeah, to be honest. as long as they guy. aren't like mean. You say, but you do love inflicting pain on people. Yes. That's the only thing. <laughs> Look at that smile. <laughs> no, we, we got on really well straight away, which makes it so much easier because it wasn't a short job. We were making it over the course of a year with the pandemic and everything. So to be able to touch back in and also to be hanging out, a lot of acting is waiting around. So to be able to hang out with someone and have a good time was a, was a massive deal. And you want to believe that relationship, if you don't really believe it, then that, that's at the heart of the movie, this sort of panic to get home and, and um, you know, him having to defend his, his family and his home, and that's, that's the sort of heart of it. So you want to believe that. So hopefully people do. Mm. Definitely. And of course, a big Marvel film came out over the weekend, Eternals, which has some great English and Irish actors in it. And I was wondering, both of you, especially you, Arch, you mentioned earlier wanting to do some different types of films. Are those Marvel movies interested to both of you as performers? Is that something you'd both like Absolutely to be part of? Absolutely not. After this, we're yes. going straight to the theatre. Yes, and we will yeah. refuse to do yeah. anything else. Yeah. I, I haven't even heard about this. I just want to go now. So they can email yeah. all they like, to be honest, Josh, but we're only going to do sort of um, yeah, repertory theatre from now on. Should we just go? Yeah, we just, we're going to yeah, leave. Okay. We, we don't want any more... Off. We don't want right. this to use this as an opportunity. Yeah, it's very much a uh, crap. Goodbye, uh, and, and without a doubt. Of course, we can do all accents, of course. Uh, but uh, we don't want that, what this is about, you know. And he just fell off my seat then. Did you? Yeah, uh, I, I limped back like you that. I gotta stop giving him alcohol because he's he's getting drunk. Yeah, mm. but... Uh, Sit, stay up, stay. Uh, he is to keep stretching your face and then no one realises you're drinking on the job. But for you, Archie, I feel like you need to be getting on the phone to Tyker because obviously he's got that Thor film he's working on in Star Wars. You need to be nagging him for the two of you to get a role in it. Yeah, I mean, I have been, but he just doesn't seem to be replying to any of the, the DMs, you know. Um, but yeah, we, you're, you're going to be the new Thor. What do you look like standing with a large fork? Isn't that what he does? It's not, it's not a blooming fork, it's a hammer. A ha that, what yeah. In Ireland, we, we use, um, that's how we eat our food is with, that, uh, with hammers instead of, <laughs> so we call them forks. Um, but yeah, well, you just you like fork man. For, I'm gonna be fork man. I was I was stabbed by a be, I was stabbed by a out. radioactive fork, and now I have special fork powers. Yeah, and that's that's my that's my Marvel journey. So if, if they're watching, you know, get in touch. <laughs> well, thanks so much, guys. And one one final question for you: Both your characters in this film seem to master dealing with nightmare family members. So if you had to give advice to anyone this Christmas who are gonna go through the same sort of thing, what would you say? Enjoy Christmas say? with family. Don't get separated or try your best not to. But what if you don't like them? What would you want to If you advice? don't like them, just disown them, I guess. Or I don't know. I, I don't know your family relationships. Yeah, so, so I feel like we're becoming your therapist now, Josh. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thanks um, so much, guys. Yeah, or hop on a plane and leave them behind is always one, is definitely one option as well. Mm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. As I said, this is a great family film and you're both terrific in it. So thanks so much and hope to speak to you again. Say hello to everyone in England for us. Yes. <laughs> I'll be counting on my sequel, uh, on my cameo in the sequel now as well. You promised yeah, it. So. You. You're going to be the new Donald Trump. <laughs> great. Like when you rocked up in the second one, that's going to be you. <laughs> thanks so much, guys. Bye. Bye.